right? I think it's, yeah, it's working. And uh, well, it feels like uh, we're the survivors here. Uh, so thanks for being still there. And uh, well, uh, I hope you find uh, you find this worth your time. I uh, I'd like to start uh, just because we're we're going to talk about comics to know a bit about who you are. So how many of you here are in comics publishing, writing, or in any way in the in the comic sector? Oh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> there were. Well, at least there are two people, one of which is not in our consortium, <laughs> that are actually in, uh, in, the, in the segment that we are targeting. Because, um, yeah, this is now about to start working. There you go. Gracias. Because uh, we're here representing the Eudicon project. It's an uh, EU-funded project under the Creative Europe program. Uh, this is us, the members of the consortium, Federation of European Publishers, Isneo, plus uh, a few others. This project will run until uh, uh, August this year. And, uh, well, these are all the goals, but in a nutshell, what we wanted to do was to help publishers who uh, are not yet very much into digital sales of comics to up their, their digital game. So uh, we noticed that uh, the panorama of digital comics in Europe was not very big. We thought maybe there's a lot of publishers who would like to go digital and don't really know how to do it, are looking for information, are a bit hesitant, are a bit afraid. So we wanted to give them the means to uh, do that, in, uh, uh, to receive all information in one place, in one way, and even experiment in a safe environment. So these were, uh, this was in, and is still, in a nutshell, the aim of the project. Uh, this is why a pillar of the project was to create a capacity building structure. We identified eight key topics that were treated in four webinars. These webinars took place in the past uh, year and a half uh, the, the in, uh, within the duration of the project. And now they're all available as, uh, plus some uh, uh, additional material as a MOOC on the Eudicon website, so I invite you all to uh, go visit the website and also sign up for our, for our, for our news. But most of all, uh, have a look at the website and you can see all the, uh, all the videos that uh, all the topics are treated in very high level because we thought if someone already has an established digital business, they don't really need us to tell them how to do it. So uh, this is really, uh, let's say, digital comic publishing for dummies. And uh, uh, those, are, those are the topics you see from uh, creating a, a, a digital portfolio all the way down to DRM, uh, uh, how to deal with piracy, that kind of stuff. Of course, we don't have the ultimate solution for piracy, it's just we're pointing out the problem. Uh, so uh, another pillar of uh, the project, and this is what I'm going to go a bit deeper into uh, in the next few minutes, was to start with some research on uh, digital comics on the digital book market, digital comic book market in Europe. So figuring out a bit what kind of information was available about the market in general, and then assessing the degree of digitization so that we got input for the development of the training tools. So we uh, distributed a questionnaire, quantitative uh, and the qualitative one. So quantitative, we passed it to all uh, the FEP partners, so all the uh, publishing associations in Europe. And we uh, also had a number of focus countries where we had directly uh, partners. There is France, Italy, Poland, and Spain. And then we had a number of interviews with individual publishers to get also gather more uh, qualitative uh, insights. So uh, again, so we got uh, information for, uh, from okay, the focus countries, uh, some detailed information about Belgium, where a comic sector is very big, Germany, where it's still significant, and a little bit of information from another 20 countries. 
uh, you see more or less where comic sector is quite small. Uh, what we found out at the very beginning with this uh, survey is that uh, indeed the comic market, overall it, it, it's, it's quite significant, but it is really uh, big in a limited number of countries. And then uh, we also noted that, and you see the information on specifically comic book sales and the comic book market is difficult to come by. Uh, it is a bit of a niche sector, of course, it is part of the broader publishing sector, but sometimes the, the links with the rest of the sector are sort of uh, weaker than for other sub uh, subcategories, also in terms of association. So we noticed, for example, that going through the national associations, it wasn't always easy to figure out uh, information about comics. And across the board, in uh, most cases, digital penetration, uh, so the level of digitization for whatever reason, is very low. The from the main countries that we surveyed, so that was already in 2020, um, we noted that the, the big markets, there again, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, they produce three to 4,000 new comic titles per year. This probably has changed already a lot in the last two years, because but we'll see it uh, in, my, in the final part of my presentation where I go deeper into a couple of countries with much more recent information. But anyway, we were talking about three, 4,000 titles per year for the bigger markets, France, Italy, uh, Germany, and Spain, uh, mid-sized country, uh, sized markets, Belgium and Poland, one to 2,000 titles with Belgium clearly punching above its weight because it's a relatively small country, a relatively small market, but again, I say comics are very, very important there. European comics, uh, so Bande dessinée, Fumetto Italiano, that kind of stuff, are the, and manga are the main genres, and manga, again, you see, is really going uh, super strong, uh, especially in the last couple of years. There are between 100 and 400 comics publishers, professional comics publishers, in uh, Germany, Italy, and France, with France having the most. Uh, less than 50 in Spain, where the sector seems to be a bit more concentrated, less than 50 in Poland as well, and again, Belgium, uh, 75, so a lot for, again, a country that relatively smaller. Turnover from comics is not insignificant. Anyway, it represents 2 to 6% of the market in uh, most territories where the presence is, uh, is important. But then we have sticking out France, where comics represent 10 to 15 percent of uh, revenues. And in French-speaking Belgium, comics make up one third, about one third of publishers' revenues. Not of all books sold in the country, but of publishers' revenues. Um, average prices, okay, go from seven and a half to 15 euros, and uh, there's no clear link with the country's income, so it's not like poorer countries have necessarily lower prices or the other way around. And um, digital catalogs consist of a few to several thousand titles in Italy, Spain, and Germany. There are more than 20,000 uh, in the catalog in France, but for the time being, very few in Poland. In the other markets, uh, I, I won't you mentioned them, but uh, which countries, but many other, in, in Europe anyway, we have very little information. Possibly there are a few hundred titles, comic titles per year. Very few publishers. Some countries barely have any comics publishers. Uh, and sometimes there's just someone who imports Disney stuff and translates it. That's uh, at least something that you more or less have everywhere. Turnover in all these other countries is a very small share of the total, less than 2%, with exceptions. Um, again, as I said, it's a, it's a niche market. Uh, in, the, in most cases in, this, in these countries, based on imported titles, as I said, like Disney, for example, or DC. And the level of digitization is extremely low. Uh, main results from the interviews, um, digital presence uh, and marketing uh, are there, the, at least the, the idea of doing, of having a digital presence and especially doing digital marketing is there, but very little, if any, actual digital products and sales. So even, I mean, digital is used as a way to market print products, but digital products, not so much. There are. Uh, most people we interviewed said they would 
go digital, provided the conditions are right. So what that means depends sometimes on, uh, on, the, on the publisher, but in general, uh, they say, yeah, digital, why not? But we need to see whether it is really worth it. We have, we have to see when the conditions are, are good. So the, 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 in general, the attitude towards digital is positive but cautious. Uh, and basically no one sees a pure digital option as viable. Most will say, okay, we'll go hybrid, we'll do, we'll, but definitely we'll keep print, and then possibly we'll experiment with digital. Uh, well, no, challenges and opportunities, there's nothing surprising. Uh, for example, there's, there's the fact that readers, in general, many readers are attached to, to print, but in comics more, uh, more than anything because the, the Comics are not only something you read, but are collector's items in many cases. And there, in digital, you don't get the same, the same experience. Piracy is, of course, present in the minds of everyone who thinks about going digital, Bis the viability of the business models, the risk of uh, wrong placement of the product. Uh, and, uh, but still, the many people see a potential opportunity, but again, it's not really clear how to uh, tap into this opportunity. Therefore, we at least were comforted with the idea that our uh, plan to uh, offer a dedicated platform made sense. Uh, of course, everyone says that the, the, the dedicated platform to go into a digital market should be accessible, fair, effective, and technologically supportive. So, just, just to conclude the first part, a uh, few general remarks. Uh, yes? Yes. To an extent, but that's one of the things that are very difficult to know, actually. So uh, I, my, my, my gut feeling would be that to a, to a good extent, yes, especially what we see this year, there are but really, it's anecdotal. I think that there, there'll be young people who maybe almost only read comics, but I mean, which is nothing bad. It could be if it's the only way to get uh, young people to uh, go into reading. Why not? But, but I mean, don't take it at face value. It's really like a sort of uh, gut feeling based on a few anecdotal elements. But we don't we don't really know. Uh, but it would be extremely interesting to actually figure that out, among other things. But so, the, um, for the time being, the digital market is very small, which at the same time means big opportunity for growth, potential for a platform to support this growth. Uh, at the same time, a, an obvious risk that non-European players fill the void, and it's happening already big time, for example, with webtoons. Uh, so especially from uh, Korean operators. And, uh, and at the same time, we see, especially really in the last couple of years, uh, maybe in part because of COVID, maybe in part for other uh, um, reasons, but the comics have shown huge dynamism, at least in a few markets where we've been able to gather information. That's what I, I'd like to uh, mention. I'll just I won't say everything that's there. You'll, uh, you see it there, and probably the, the, the slides will be will be available. But we've seen what hap what's been happening in the last couple of years in France, and then we we'll see in Italy, webtoons, for example, growing uh, very strong, uh, streaming services that are boosting uh, comic sales, and in this case, in particular, manga. Um, there has been uh, a lot of speculation whether uh, in countries like France and Italy, the culture pass, I don't know if you're familiar with that, there's money that's given to young people to buy uh, cultural products and services. This is used a lot to buy books, both in France and in Italy, and within books it's used a lot to buy comics. Uh, so, for example, some booksellers report that uh, up to one third of manga sales were made w using the money from this culture pass. Although then other analysts say that the, the pass didn't exp explain only a small part of the additional sales, for example, in 2021. But as you see, 84% of the culture pass 
uh, survey from a year ago was spent on books, and 71% of these books were mangas. So Culture Pass maybe didn't make a big impact on the market overall, but uh, definitely uh, that money is being used a lot to, to buy manga. Uh, study from early this year uh, showed plus 50% in revenues, plus 50% in uh, volume for uh, comic sales in France. So that those are levels of growth that you're not used to in general in the book sector. Uh, one, uh, so uh, the Bande dessinée comics become the second largest category of book sales after general literature. That's also quite impressive. One comic book out of two sold is a manga. So manga, strong within a strong comic sector. In the top 10 sales of comic books, seven titles are manga, and one book buyer out of three is a comic book uh, buyer. More than seven million of people aged 10 or more. In Italy, also recent research from December last year by the Italian Publishers Association in collaboration with Aldus Up, which is another uh, EU-funded project, and our project, and uh, Luca Comics on comic readers. In Italy, we have more than 8 million comic readers, which again, is uh, a lot. They're 18% of the population with a clear uh, majority of men, rather, uh, the, uh, the uh, comic readers are strong readers. They read uh, 17 and a half uh, comic books per year. Uh, print readers um, read more than, than digital. Uh, comic sales have increased massively in uh, 2021. They more than doubled, with one volume sold out of 10 being a comic book. Uh, growth, uh, looking at a longer perspective from 2019, is even more impressive uh, to 156% increase in volume, 175% in value, with comic books having become passed from the fourth to the top category of book sales, manga top genre with more than half of uh, comic sales in 2021, and for what we've seen the first months of 2022, this growth continues, uh, mainly, mainly, mainly. Uh, again, even, even in countries, let's say, more advanced, not as a judgment, but uh, like with, with a stronger uh, comic presence and a stronger digital presence, still the, the most of the sales are, uh, are in print and yeah, the, the, most of the growth there is uh, still in print. Then uh, a couple of words on global uh, developments. Uh, GFK also uh, made a special uh, analysis on, on the comic sector last year, and they, they, they talk about uh, an unstoppable comics boom, uh, nothing less. So with uh, sales of comics increasing by, uh, in most cases, at least 50%, with peaks of 98% in Italy, 73% in Portugal, and again, within a strong performance of comics, stronger even performance of mangas and manhuas, that if I remember well, is the Korean version of uh, mangas. Webtoon, uh, interesting developments, uh, uh, among other things, you probably know that Wattpad was acquired by Naver. This is the South Korean conglomerate that also uh, owns Webtoon, so now there's going to be a lot of synergy. There is already a lot of synergy. Uh, they, they, uh, the um, Naver's Webtoon platform uh, has experienced massive uh, increases in, uh, in users. They uh, spent, well, they made a strong investment in uh, merging the studio departments of Webtoon and Wattpad that was announced again about a year ago. They partnered with DC Comics to create web Webtoons with DC characters, and a very interesting crossover. And there's the fact that Korean platforms are trying and to some extent are being already successful in taking over the uh, European market. They're starting with France, which is considered to be easier uh, to begin with because of its comic uh, tradition, so that uh, two, three months ago, Naver declared the, the, the launch of web, the, the, the European Webtoon branch with headquarters uh, precisely in France. So uh, 
coming back and closing the circle, what we uh, wanted to do, and I'll pass the word to Luke from ISNEO, was precisely to see if we could stimulate European publishers to take up this uh, digital comics market bef in a way before it ends up all in the hands of the Koreans, in a way, although we have nothing against them. So thanks, and uh, now it's up to Luke, so uh, I guess, <laughs> can we? Uh, yeah. How about, I had COVID a couple of months ago, I think I'm super immune for the time being. <laughs> So I'll be brief, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to spend much of your time. Um, following up on what uh, Enrico has been presenting, um, so, uh, where is it? Thanks. Hey, how I was going to go next to the screen, it appears. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, it's not on the, yeah, it's coming, all right. So, yeah, basically, uh, basically uh, as uh, Enrico explained, uh, comic books are a very specific segment in the publishing industry. And it's um, very interesting to see that uh, it's, uh, in terms of digital, uh, the digital comics market is, is growing, but Europe is really lagging behind. We are uh, much late in this development, and this has only an impact on the presence of European uh, content on the digital scene, and that's why this group of uh, Udicom has been put together. Basically, I'm not going to uh, get back to what uh, has been presented before, but just uh, to understand that this is a very, uh, very specific segment. Why is that? It's because Japan by itself is only is uh, uh, almost half of the global worldwide market. But in this marketplace, very specifically, digital represents 55% of sales. Manga publishers in Japan make more than 50% of their sales through digital. So this has an impact on not only Japan, of course, but on the world globally uh, in terms of uh, digital comic books. South Korea, same thing, well, almost same thing, um, a much uh, smaller market, but uh, basically a strong uh, digital uh, uh, share for, for revenues. The USA is not that huge, actually, uh, uh, and quite compare favorably uh, with, with Europe, because Europe is uh, not far in terms of size from what the US represents in terms of market value. So that's why it's a very specific uh, segment. It's because geographically, there are places where comic books are very strong and others where it's not that strong. And actually, again, the big issue, in my opinion, and in our opinion, globally, in this group, is that, yeah, in Europe, if you look at the scene, there are something like 1,000 publishers globally that publish approximately 15,000 new releases every year. So there is a strong source of creation of content, of very good content actually, which competes very well with the rest of the world. The thing is that, again, digital is very small uh, for, uh, in Europe. And that's why we believe it's important to, uh, to address uh, this issue and, and help and evangelize the publishers, which are often small companies actually uh, in many countries except in the leading countries like, uh, for, for comic books like uh, France or even Germany or I Italy to some degree. But on, uh, there are many publishers which are extremely small but are really defending the European creation in a world dominated globally by, by manga and, and US comics. So uh, uh, if you don't know is, is new, please check on, on the web or, or on the app, on the applications. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pure player in terms of digital comic books, uh, meaning that we, are <coughs> we gather something like 80,000 contents uh, uh, available uh, either through a subscription model or uh, a la carte uh, uh, selling. 
and uh, in six languages, uh, uh, French, English, uh, Dutch, uh, Italian, uh, 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 German, sorry, and uh, soon uh, Spanish. Uh, so we have all this, uh, this content made available uh, digitally, EPUBs mainly, uh, but also Webtoons. Uh, we publish our own uh, Webtoon offers, and uh, that's why we believe uh, it's different, uh, this segment, uh, as comparison to the other ebook uh, um, uh, offer. It's because effectively we need to be on, on, on the smartphone, so I, I, I follow up to my, uh, our predecessor in the presentation, where we need to have uh, uh, all the content readable on the, sma on, on the smartphone, but also on, on other devices, but basically we have a way to, uh, uh, to, to, to cut uh, <laughs> the, 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 the bande dessinée, the largest formats, in order to make that more readable on Easy Comics. We have the Webtoon uh, offering on the, on the uh, um, uh, smartphone also. But you can, we must offer the possibility to read in double page or single page, from left to right, right to left, up and down, and, 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 and reverse. And, uh, and basically, uh, all the reading models are made available uh, uh, all the time. That's, wh that's why also it's uh, somewhat different to the other uh, um, uh, digital uh, uh, EPUB markets. Uh, also, we have uh, we have we are currently uh, uh, we have apps on the of course on the on the web iOS and Android Android TV also on Nintendo Switch and also more recently on the MetaQuest uh, the uh, Oculus uh, VR uh, uh, helmet. Why is that? It's because we we believe we need to uh, look for new users where they already go uh, looking for a digital entertainment. Um, I mean video games, uh, videos. Uh, music, uh, instead of uh, trying to catch them from, from far away places, we need to be uh, ourselves uh, uh, where they are, where they are already looking for uh, digital entertainment and make uh, digital comic books uh, part of this digital entertainment arena. Well, just to say here that uh, uh, we, we have grown by 35% every year since uh, six years. Uh, and basically, uh, subscription, the subscription model is the one which is driving our growth mostly uh, in the recent years, specifically in 2021. We had uh, last year in, tw in 21, 4 million reads happening, happened uh, on, the, uh, on our apps. Uh, and uh, we, we have something like 1.6 uh, 1 million uh, users uh, accounts uh, uh, live. And here is just to say that we are sitting in the middle between the, um, the uh, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese uh, platforms that are coming more and more, and they are, as Enrico said before, uh, already in France. It's coming everywhere. They will be in Germany very soon. Uh, it's already starting. And it's going to be also in, uh, in all Europe very soon. Uh, so all these um, Asian uh, uh, platforms uh, will be there, and they will bring mainly Asian content. Uh, and it's the same also in a way with the US, where we see that uh, uh, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, uh, are also bringing their new uh, application with a subscription uh, for their co own content offer offers. Already, uh, well, for the time being, it's only in English, but it's coming to be translated, I guess, uh, later on. But we believe that the main, um, the main uh, threat, in a way, is this Asian content coming really strong to us. And I believe, we believe uh, in Unicom that we need to be offering uh, our European content in probably uh, our own uh, platforms also. So that's why it's, uh, we believe it's so important to, uh, to help the, uh, all the publishers in Europe, uh, comic book publishers, to be part, uh, one way or another, uh, of this uh, digital growth that's going to happen uh, in the next few years. So basically, just to summarize, uh, we have uh, one brand, one, one platform for all the different formats, when Webtoon, uh, EPUB, uh, uh, with bande dessinée, comic books, US comic books, and, and, uh, and mangas. Uh, a unique editorial content, we also publish our own uh, webtoons uh, 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 exclusive, uh, exclusively. We are part of the publishing uh, ecosystem in, in Europe, and uh, that's why we are also uh, 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 working with, with Yodicom, because uh, we believe it's important to be 
also part uh, of this ecosystem. And we have an extended footprint because we try to be wherever, uh, again, wherever the uh, uh, young user specifically, and to answer the question about the age or the, the, we currently have uh, users, uh, uh, the new users coming uh, 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 to us are mostly 18 to 24 years old. That's, that's the main target group we are, uh, we are addressing actually. And that's what I wanted to, to, to share with you. And uh, of course, if you have any, any question, I would be more than happy to answer. But maybe it's also time for cocktail, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I was in Warsaw last week, uh, presenting to uh, Polish publishers, uh, and I understand there is a quite an interesting scene there. Uh, uh, I, I believe we, for us, it would be probably a next step uh, uh, to, to, to go to, 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 to Poland. Uh, we already, I, I guess, uh, have access to the content uh, uh, because we already know most of the publishers there. Um, the thing is that we, we have a small market, so we are a small company, so we don't have big money. So how, do we, how can we get to all these countries? Because we need to have local marketing. We can't just, you know, be, we, we are based in Paris, but we, are, we have already to manage uh, the, the, the editorial, editorial marketing uh, for uh, uh, English, uh, German, Dutch, uh, Italian, etc. So our issue is not that we don't want to, is that <laughs> we, need, we need financial support uh, to, to help that because the market, we can't get the uh, financing coming out of the marketplace currently, it's too small. Uh, that's the, 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 the chicken and the egg in a way. Yes, please. Yeah, so how, how do we, how do we uh, uh, address the potential users uh, in different ways? Um, of course, we, are, we, have, we do the usual acquisition through uh, Google, YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, so we spend money in acquisition, uh, classical acquisition, like all the other apps, basically. Uh, we also do uh, some, um, some um, work with the influencers. Uh, there are influencers dedicated to comic book content, so we are uh, uh, addressing them and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, work with them. We also do partnerships, and that's been in the recent past uh, something which has been very helpful. For instance, we, um, we had a strong deal with Orange in France, whereby Orange was offering uh, the subscription access uh, to their users, to all their users, for free. Uh, to, to, to their, uh, to their uh, users. And of course, this is a great way to, uh, to, 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 to uh, address uh, a large base of users. Only a, sh a part of them is interested uh, really in uh, comic books. And of course, it's not the whole, uh, the, the whole database of Orange. So, but, but, but actually, it, it's been a great way to do that. We are also partnering with Canal Plus in France, also, with, where we, which is uh, also an access, give us access to their to their uh, subscribers. And we we uh, basically try uh, our our best to uh, to do that. But of course, this is the limitation we have. Again, uh, chicken and the egg. The, if we don't have the marketing money uh, to address the the audience, there is no no point growing. We can't grow. Uh, and and in order to grow, we need <laughs> the, the acquisition. So it's always the same the same the same issue. But so far, we've we've managed to uh, to really. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, do this acquisition with our uh, marketing budgets and uh, and finance ourselves this uh, this growth and do these partnerships uh, as I was mentioning. What 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 sort of? So yeah. Okay. So in terms of um, the subscription scheme, uh, we have. Changes. We have changed the model several times. Uh, so uh, of course we have adjusted. Uh, now we give away uh, 14 days for free 
uh, and the conversion rate between uh, for, for this, uh, uh, these people who have uh, access to this uh, free period of time uh, is, is something like 15%, 15% of conversion from free to pay. Uh, uh, but uh, that, so that's, that's uh, one thing. For the a la carte sales, it's different, of course, because, uh, and that's the issue because we tend to also spend more money, invest more money in acquisition for subscription because, of course, there is re retention comprised into the uh, subscription scheme where, uh, in return, on the uh, a la carte selling, uh, we invest for uh, one purchase and we don't even know whether the uh, next purchase, uh, the, the customer we have uh, acquired will purchase again uh, some content. So the retention is absolutely key because uh, uh, even more so because the, the, the target audience is not that huge. So we absolutely need to address specifically the retention scheme. So we are working on that on the customer journey to, to, uh, to, uh, to improve all the time the, by different ways and means to, uh, to keep uh, the, uh, the, the, the user coming back. And specifically, we do CRM a lot. Uh, so we have a very uh, customer relationship management uh, being implemented and, and managed by uh, marketing people, but marketing slash editorial. So we are, we are ready. And our, for instance, our, uh, um, the success of the newsletters is measured by the opening, the rate of opening of this uh, newsletter. And honestly, it's quite high. It's, uh, it's uh, something like 15% uh, of opening on all the newsletters we, we, we send to the, to the users, so, so to our user base. So we are. We, so this is a way to keep people interested with uh, speaking about new releases, uh, promotions, etc. So that's that's uh, the other way to keep people uh, uh, in the loop. Yes, please. Uh, so a la carte is uh, very simple. It we take thirty percent of the revenues uh, as as per usual. And on the on the subscription model, yes, it's it's on the um, the, uh, the 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 reading uh, uh, the number of readings. Actually, it's not exactly the time; it's the number of readings. We consider a reading um, uh, uh, that a book has been read uh, once it's been read over thirty percent. So, and we count all the readings, and we we split the, the sales generated by. Uh, by the, the subscription and divided by the number of readings. So it changes every month, actually. And we give away, again, 30% to the publisher. Uh, we keep 30%, sorry. Yeah, we could say 70% of the publisher. <laughs> I, I will check, but no, no, it's, uh, <laughs> that's up to you. Any other question? No, okay. That's it, I think. Yeah. <laughs>